Hey guys, welcome back to Shop Life. In today's video, we're going to be doing a DIY on how to replace your window regulator. So this is a 2001 325i. This process is very similar for all the E46 chassis. Uh, it differs a little bit between coupes and sedans, but for the most part, it's the same. So let's go ahead and get started. So this window, the regulator broke probably about a week or two ago, and I just had two by fours that I've stuffed up in there. That way the window didn't fall down because the regulator was not giving any resistance to the window at all. So I didn't want the window shaking around or like falling down while I was driving. So I went ahead and put some two by fours in it. And then I went ahead and ordered an eBay window regulator, which was $25. So the main reason I ordered one from eBay was just to see how the quality is, how long it lasts. Everybody knows that the E46's window regulators tend to go out very often. So I bought the $25 one. We'll see how it works out. And if anything goes wrong or if it doesn't fit properly, I'll go ahead and tell you guys. So let's go and get started. All right, so what you're gonna to wanna to do first is if you wanna be on the safe side, you can go ahead and disconnect the negative terminal on your battery. Uh, main reason you wanna do that is because on the front doors, you have airbags on the side. So we're gonna to have to disconnect the airbag. That way we can get access to the window regulator. So usually you'll be fine if you just, if you, as long as you have the airbag disconnected, and you don't turn the ignition on, you'll be fine. But if you turn the ignition on while the airbag is disconnected, your airbag light is gonna show up on your gauge cluster. So if you wanna just be on the safe side, go ahead and disconnect your negative terminal. So let's go ahead and start out by removing this trim piece. So you wanna start at the edge because there's, there's two little tabs that come out from right here and they just uh, attach on the trim piece right here. So if you start around here, you're gonna break those tabs. So you wanna start in the back and it just pulls out. If you have a trim removal tool, you can use that. And here are the two tabs I was talking about. So on the plastic trims, it's very common that these plastic tabs that go in the door panel uh, pull out. If you have the wood trim, it's usually not that big of a problem. But if these pull out, don't really worry about it when you're just reinstalling it. Just make sure it's the right orientation so it pops in easily. All right, now that we have that out, we're gonna go ahead and remove these two T20 bolts. So the bolt that goes on the inside is really long. The one on the outside is short, and it's gonna be the same size as the other three bolts that we're gonna remove after this. Now we're gonna go ahead and take off this cover. Uh, it doesn't, there's no button or anything on here. So there's a little section right at the very bottom that you can stick like a flat head or any kind of trim tool that's very skinny. That way you can just go ahead and pull it up. You wanna be careful not to damage the leather. So as you can see, there's a little tab right here and then a tab in the front as well. Now when you look inside the hole, there's another T20 bolt. So you want to be really careful when you're using a socket or even a screwdriver. Make sure that the head of the actual torque socket or screwdriver is properly on the bolt. That way you don't end up stripping it. So you can use a skinny magnet to retrieve the bolt once you have it loosened out. For me, I'm just going to leave it in there and I'll take it out once I have the door panel off. Now you have two more bolts on the bottom of this armrest and you're gonna have two covers for the armrest. And basically what happens is when you try to take these out, usually they do break. Uh, if they do break, your only option is to get another one. Uh, you can't really glue it back together because it's really brittle. So let's go ahead and start out. I like to do it right from the middle. That way you can get both of the tabs out. So as you can see, this is the orientation. The long tab goes all the way inside. So you don't want to pry from right there because it's going to break that tab. And this one just pushes and then it resides on the back end of this. So if you start out in the middle and just try to pull the back side out, that's going to be the best bet on not to break the whole tab. Now we have two more bolts, one in each hole. And both of these bolts are also T20.
All right, now both of those bolts are loose and out. Now we're gonna go to remove the door panel. You wanna start at the bottom. All the door panel is held in with now is just little push clips that push right into the door and they're all plastic. So these tend to break if the door panel hasn't been removed in a long time. So I would suggest getting a few of these just to keep on hand. That way when you put the door panel back on, it doesn't rattle. So what you wanna do is you wanna find a little gap anywhere over here or get your trim tool or a flat head, just use it carefully and get inside one of the gaps and just pry one of the clips off. So once you have one of the clips off, you can start working your way around with your fingers and pulling the rest of it off. All right, so once you have all the clips off from the sides, you're gonna wanna pull it off from these little metal clips so you want to pull those straight out. You don't want to do it at an angle. That way you don't break any of the clips or the actual uh, door panel itself. So once you have that off, now we're going to disconnect the speaker and the door handle. This is the actual door handle right here. In order to remove this from the door, you just pull it up on the end. And when you pull that up, it's just going to come out of this tab. And then you're going to have that off. Now you want to go ahead and unhook the speakers. So this right here, you just pull on the connector and it'll pop off. And then this speaker, you actually have to push these two tabs in and then pull the harness off. Just like that. And this is all the plastic clips I was talking about. If any of these actually detach, like the actual holder detaches from the door panel, you can use some kind of glue, a uh, hot glue, lock, like Loctite glue or anything like that to uh, attach it back. All right, now we're going to go ahead and disconnect this airbag. It's held in with three 10 millimeter bolts. Once you have those out, now we have to remove this connector. First, go ahead and get the harness through this uh, little gap. And now for the connector, what you want to do is you want to pry out this little tab from the bottom. Just like that, there's a clip on each side. Once you have that pried off, then you can go ahead and remove the connector. Just like that. Now you're going to want to go ahead and remove this control box. Uh, there's two T20 bolts holding it in. And you're going to leave this connected, just leave it hanging right there. Now your last step is going to be removing, well your last step in order to get to the window regulator and the glass is to be removing this uh, vapor barrier. So this vapor barrier is what keeps the water out so you don't have any water leaking inside through the door panel or whatever. Uh, these Usually when you start taking them off they tend to tear. If someone's taken off before it's probably already torn. It's held in with uh, what's called butyl tape. It's a black little tape kind of substance that stays sticky. So your best bet to get it off without really tearing too much is to use like a heat gun or a hair dryer or something to warm it up a little bit and then use some kind of floss or some kind of blade to cut it, like cut the actual tape while you're pulling it off. And when you cut it, you really don't have to worry about it not sticking again because you, whenever you put the vapor barrier back on, there's still gonna be the tape residue and it'll stick back to it. So you don't have to worry about that. So let's go ahead and start pulling it off. And once you touch this tape, be careful when you're touching anything else because it will leave black residue on your fingers. All right, so now we have the uh, window regulator motor right here and the regulator attaches through these four nuts, one right here, one right here, one on the top, and one right here. So what we're gonna do first is go ahead and disconnect the connector for the window regulator motor. You just push this tab in and pull it out. It goes right here. Now, since I have these two by fours in here to hold the window, I'm gonna go ahead and remove those so I can bring the window down and release the glass from the regulator itself. All right, so if you're at this point and you can't really move your glass, uh, like there's resistance and it won't let you move it up and down, 
What you can do is you can remove the motor, which is held in with three, uh, three T30 bolts. So there's one right here, one right here, and one right here. Once you remove it, then you're gonna twist the motor. Uh, so you see how there's brackets right here. So you can only twist it one way. If you try to twist uh, counterclockwise, it's gonna get stuck. So you have to twist it clockwise, and then once you have it past, once you have it past these brackets, and you can see the actual bolt holes, then you just pull it straight out. And that will, what that will do is it'll release it from the gear, so you can go ahead and push the window down. All right, so what you want to do is you want to get the glass down about, about that much. And so you can see there's an eight millimeter hex bolt or eight millimeter bolt through this hole right here, which is the access hole for you to remove that bolt. So that way you can release the glass from the regulator. There's one right here and there's another one right there. There's another one right there. So let's go ahead and remove those bolts. So you want to be careful that that bolt doesn't fall down. Because if it does fall down, you're going to have to use some kind of magnet or you might get lucky enough to use your fingers and grab it. All right, now let's go and remove the bolt on the other side. You can remove it when it's down here or if it's easier for you, you can pull it up some more and get it through this hole right here. All right, so once you have that bolt out as well, now you can go ahead and lift the glass all the way up. Just push the glass a little bit on the bottom so it releases the tabs from the actual regulator and then you can go ahead and push the glass all the way up. And this is where you want someone to help you uh, so they can hold the glass up so it doesn't fall down while you're removing the regulator. All right, so now that the glass is released from the regulator, let's go ahead and pull the regulator out. Let's go ahead and pull it Oh, there's one more. Sorry, there's five. Now you just push it out. Let's go ahead and get this end out first. All right, so here's the old window regulator. So what we're going to do from this one is we're going to take off this motor because the one I ordered did not come with the new motor. So like I said, it's three uh, T30 bolts. And as you saw, I rotated out. Now we can pull it straight out. Just like that. Now when you're reinstalling, you wanna grease this gear just a little bit and just inspect it and make sure it's not stripped before you put it back in the new one. So here's the new regulator. Now let's go ahead and reinstall this motor. So you want to push it straight in while it's not in the bracket and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to twist it counterclockwise that way we can line all this up and then bolt it back in. All right, now that we have the motor in, let's go ahead and reinstall it. We'll start out by putting this side in first. We'll go ahead and get this side in now. And we'll just hand tight these nuts. Now let's go ahead and get this side in properly. So we are having a little bit of issue with the fitment. 
Uh, as you can see, that bolt is not popping all the way through, nor is that one. All right, now that we have all that out of the way, let's go ahead and hook up this motor again. And let's go ahead and hook up the airbag. What we're gonna do now, now that the airbag and everything is hooked up, we're gonna put the key in the ignition and we're gonna raise the regulator up until we can see those holes to where we're gonna put the glass in through. That way we don't have to uh, really, like, really struggle with this to push it up or get the glass to sit on there or anything. We're just gonna go ahead and raise that regulator up, get it so that we can see it through the hole, and then we'll lower the glass and push it into the actual bracket and then screw it in. Let's go ahead and remove the airbag again. All right, so now the actual glass is clicked into the regulator. As you can see, there's two little red tabs that are on the bracket on the glass, and there's a little section where on the regulator where you can push it through. So that's where the glass is actually resting on the regulator now. And as you can see, there's just a hole that you can see through, and that's where we have to put this nut. And this is the orientation that it goes. This little washer surface goes towards the back of the glass, and you have to just push it through and make sure it goes in through the right grooves. All right, so now that's in all the way. So we're having some more fitment issues because the glass, the bracket is actually not sitting 100% where it needs to on the regulator. On this side, it already sat properly but on this side it's not going in and I can't really get the glass to push down anymore because that's just how the normal curve is. So I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and secure it on this side, then I'm going to hook the airbag up, move it up and down and see if this actual bracket moves up or down at all. That way we can see if we can go ahead and bolt that in as well. Alright, so a trick I like to use so the bolt doesn't fall when you're trying to put it in is to tape the bolt just a little bit onto the socket. Now what you want to do is you want to hold the nut with one of your fingers on the back and then go ahead and get the bolt through. All right, now that I have it on, I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead and pull the socket off now. All right, so now that side's done. Let's see if we can get this side to fit in properly. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the airbag and then uh, try to move the window up and down. So it's still not going in all the way. So I'm going to go ahead and try to just get the bolt on as much as I can. And then I'm going to go ahead and order another regulator. So don't buy eBay regulators. All right, so that's on. Let's go ahead and try to get the window back up all the way. Alright, so it does go up and down, it works. It seems like it has a little bit more resistance than it used to, but that could just be a weak motor, uh, or it could be the regulator. But as you saw, we had fitment issues with the regulator. Uh, main fitment issue is the one on this bracket. Since that glass is not going all the way in the bracket, that means that there's going to be added stress on that bracket every time you put the window up and down. So I mean, it'll, the window will go up and down, but that bracket is bound to break prematurely just because of the added stress. So besides that, the regulator does work. For $25, you, it's pretty much half the price of any of the other regulators available. Uh, I mean, you can buy other regulators off of ECS tuning. The FCP Euro only regulators they have are the OEM ones, and those are, I think, about $90. Then you can go to your auto parts store, and you, get, you can get the Dorman window regulator, and those are about 
50 to $60. So this is definitely the cheapest by like 50%. So it's your choice. If you want to get it, you can get it. It will work, but it's probably going to die a lot quicker than the other ones. So let's go ahead and put this stuff back together. All right, let's go in and get the vapor barrier back on. A good way to line up the vapor barrier is just to look at all the holes and just get those holes lined up and then the rest of the stuff should align accordingly. All right, just so make sure you secure it, push all the tape down, that way it sticks properly. Because if your vapor barrier does not seal properly, if you, have, if you live in a very rainy area, the water is gonna get in. Or when you wash your car and you leave the water on the door too long, it's gonna still come in. All right, so now that we have that done, let's go ahead and put on this module. Now let's go ahead and hook up the airbag. Now that we have that secure, we can go ahead and hook the door panel back up. All right, so first you want to go ahead and hook up the speakers. Once you have the speakers, now we can go ahead and hook up the door handle. Make sure the handle is in the, this position right here. And just hold it. And you want to slide this in. Just like that. Now you want to get this actual lock to sit in the right hole. Just like that. Now you want to line everything up. Now that we have all the clips pushed in, let's go ahead and put the bolts back. Once you have the bolts tightened, let's go ahead and put the covers back on. Now these you want to be really careful so you don't break the tabs. Because if the tabs break, this is not going to stay in unless you put some kind of hot glue or buy a new one. Now let's go ahead and put the trim back on. Like I said, with the plastic ones, if the white part comes off with it, you can buy replacement ones, or you can, or, or you can just have the correct orientation when you're putting it back in. So you want to get these two tabs to slide in here first. And there you have it for the window regulator DIY. So this is very similar on the driver side. And I believe I have a how to remove a door panel for the rear of the car on my channel already. And then once you have that off for the rear window regulator, you know how we had two tabs on this regulator? On the rear one, there's only one. So you just have to get the window to line up properly in that gap. That way you can see that eight millimeter bolt. And then just go ahead and pull that bolt off, push the red tab off of the regulator and push the glass all the way up and then pull the regulator out. That's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos.